Good evening, everybody. JDT Friday Spin 97 here. And today on episode four of my throwback show, I'm going to talk about the story of a American's Dep lower price department store, Mervyn's. So enjoy the video. <laughs> Jump all around, jump all around. Hip hop, you yeah. Get up, jump all around, jump all around. Get up, hip hop, you Get up, jump all around, jump. Stop, stop, get up. Stop, stop, get up. Yeah. Stop, stop, get up. Yeah. Yeah. Stop, stop, get up. Yeah. Yeah. Stop, stop, get up. Yeah. Yeah. Open, open. Hi. <laughs> no! Ah, hi, you okay? It's a dream again. Which one? Lose his key or key breaks key off? Key breaks off. Key breaks off. Oh, yeah, no. I know. Mervyn Super Sale now through Saturday. Doors open at 9. We promise. Mervyn's big brand, small prices. Mervyn's was an American middle-scale department store chain based in Haywood, California, and founded by Mervyn G. Morris. It carried national brands of clothing, footwear, bedding, bath products, furniture, jewelry, beauty products, electronics, toys, and housewares. Many of the company's stores were opened in shopping malls. However, some locations were operated independently. Based on a 2005 revenue, Mervyn's was the 83rd largest retail in the United States. In 2006, Mervyn's had 189 stores in 10 states. One year later, Mervyn's had reduced its store count to 167 stores in 7 states. On October 17, 2008, the company announced that it would liquidate its assets through a Chapter 7 filing. All remaining locations were closed by the end of the year. The Morris family had bought back intentional property rights to the company in 2009, announced plans to relaunch Mervyn's as an internet-based enterprise, but the proposed revival never came to fr fruition. Mervyn G. Morris founded the first Mervyn store in San Lorenzo, California on July 29, 1949. The store was supposed to be named Mervyn's, but a designer suggested that a spelling with a Y instead of an I would be more visually appealing. Mervyn's was located in the midst of San Lorenzo Village, a planned residential community between the cities of Haywood and San Leandro, composed of two- and three-bedroom trusted homes built between the 1944 and the 1950s. Mervyn's carved a niche for itself by having a relatively no-frill shopping environment that reduced overhead, enabling the store to price merchandise lower than competing department stores. Mervyn's also offers significantly discounted factory seconds of bases such as jeans, t-shirts, underwear, and similar garments, as well as household linens with flaws minor and undetectable undetec by most. During the 1950s and 1960s, this made Mervyn's popular with the young suburban families comprising the majority of San Lorenzo's population. This marketing strategy would, was later abandoned before Mervyn's expanded beyond its original single location. But Mervyn's remained popular as a lower-priced alternative to national department store chains. 
The second Mervyn store opened about 15 miles south as an anchor tenant of the Fred Mount Hub Shopping Center, one of two regional malls in Fremont, California in 1962. In mid-1975, Mervyn's operated stores in major cities and towns throughout California, and by October, it had expanded to Southern California opening stores in Fullerton and Huntington Beach. The location is a mill break was, was particularly popular among San Francisco Peninsula, Peninsula customers searching for deals on off-season discount items. By 1978, the company had grown to a chain of more than 50 stores in three states, and Mervyn's was acquired by, David, by Dayton Hudson Corporation, now Target Corporation. Mervyn's kept it, its separate identity as a Day, Dayton Hudson sub, subsidiary. The average store had 80 to 130 employees. There was a store team leader, executive team leaders, department leaders, benefit team members, and part-time employees. All employees had credit goals which referred to the number of customers that opened a Mervyn's credit account. Part-time employees were expected one per every eight hours, and the leadership team was expected one per every four hours. Mervyn's entered Florida in 1988 with a store at Lakeland Square Mall in Lakeland and began major expansions outside of California with Atlanta being the site of a particularly strong expansion campaign, followed by Miami in 1991 with the conversion of five Lord & Taylor locations, Cutler Ridge Mall 1982, Coral Square 1984, Miami International Mall, Fullerton Beach Mall, both in 1985, and Treasure Coast Square in 1987. Mervyn's has not previously had a retail presence in the southern in the southern U.S., taking over a handful of Jordan Mars sites in 1992, along with a newly built store in Pembroke Lakes Mall. They also competed for mall space with J.C. Penney, which later received top anchor spots at the Town Center Mall in Kennesaw Shannon Mall in Union City, rebuilt as DHL Distribution Center, and Gwinnett Place Mall in Duluth, now Beauty Master. Master. Stores that were unaffected with who those were those at the North DeClad Mall in, in Decuter that was taken over by Optins. Burlington Coke Factory now occupies the store, and North Point Mall in Alpharetta, which became a Parisian and was rebuilt as AMC Theaters. This was also likewise done at the same time in Florida, where the company sold 10 stores to Dillard's, including five in Melbourne and two others, Lakeland Square and Pembroke Lakes. The latter three locations became double headers for Dillard's. The eight other Florida stores were included in the deal and were sold to other retailers, Mervyn's had withdrawn from both Miami and Atlanta in 1997. During the 1990s, Mervyn's also expanded into Arizona, Colorado, Texas, Michigan, Minnesota, and Washington State. From 1995 to 2001, the stores were rebranded as Mervyn's California in, in an effort to identify with, it, with its West Coast roots. A media campaign was launched to publicize the rebranding with TV commercials and catalogs featuring former San Francisco 49ers quarterback Joe Montana. The rebranding had little effect on the company's renovations, and the California was dropped from the name in 2001, reverting to the original name. The major of their stores in Texas didn't even consider adding the California name to their stores. 
In March 2004, Target Corporation announced that they planned to put the Mervins and Marshall Field Fields divisions up for sale to focus on Target stores. Target Corporation was approached by many buyers from both stores, but many of the potential buyers saw value only in the real estate. Target refused to sell to the groups that wanted to purchase Mervins for the property value only. Target would only consider the deals that would not close the company and put the then 30,000 employees out of work. The Mervyn's locations in Minnesota were closed in 2004 as part of a deal between Target Corporation selling their Marshall Fields division to the May Department Stores Company in, 2000, in June 2004. May purchased nine Twin Cities area Mervyn's locations alongside with their Marshall Fields stores and immediately, and immediately announced closure of those Mervyn stores. Analysts saw that this as a move by the May company to block competition from acquiring those locations. In July 2004, Target Corporation announced that Mervyn's had been sold to a group of investors that included private investment firm and turnaround specialist Sun Capital Partners and Cerberus Capital Management, and the real estate investment company Lubert Alder Management Inc., Rick Leto, was named the new president and CEO in January 2005. 62 stores closers were announced by the new owners in September 2005, stating the 62 stores closed only occurred for 17% of the chain sales. The closers comprised 28 of the 40 stores in Texas, 15 stores in Michigan, 10 stores in Colorado, 3 stores in Oklahoma, three stores in Louisiana, and one store closing in each state of Utah, Oregon, and California. Mervyn's has an inviolable real estate portfolio, and it was believed they could further invest in those properties and make themselves more competitive. In 2007, an additional 18 stores were closed. Of the stores closed, 17 were in Oregon and Washington and one in Grand Junction, Colorado, which, which was the last remaining Mervyn store in that state. Signs of fictional distress and possible bankruptcies surfaced on July 21, 2008, when the Associated Press reported that Mervyn's had stopped updating its financial status and the department store's venture ceased shipping from products hurting the store's back-to-school season sales efforts. In addition, financing requests were denied by lenders. This raised the possibility of the company to have to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy or going out of business altogether. The company made no official comments at the time, but on July 29, 2008, Mervis announced that it had filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the United States Bankruptcy Court for the Northern District of California. Soon, the Chapter 11 case was converted to Chapter 7 liquidation on October 17, 2008. At this time of this announcement, three stores just had just held a grand openings only a few months prior to be told what they would should close. Although the company initially vowed to keep all locations open, open during the reorganization efforts, the company announced in August of 2008 the closure of all 26 underperforming stores. The company hired an outside company to assist in the liquidation of assets from the stores affected. The closures also marked a complete retreat by Mervins from the Idaho market. Who sold soul stores in Boyce, which was one of the ones marked for closure. In Texas, the, a complete retreat was slated from, from San Antonio, where, where all three remain stores were marked for closure. In addition to the closure of the soul stores in Lubbock, Midland, and Oceda. After these closures, Mervyn's was left was about 
was left within about 150 stores, 16 in Arizona, 121 in California, 3 each in Nevada and New Mexico, 7 in Texas, and 6 in Utah. In September 2008, Mervyn sued the private equity firms involved in the leveraged buyout of the chain, alleging that the deal has stripped the retail from its real estate assets, forcing it to bankruptcy. Mervyn said in his suit that the Serapis Capital Management and its partners had used the, the increased rent to finance the buyout. Although the company attempted to undergo reorganization under bankruptcy, Mervyn's ultimately succumbed on the ongoing Great Recession and announced that it would liquidate its assets through Chapter 11 of Title 11 in the U.S. United States Code. St stating it's the best course of action to maximize value for all of the company's creditors, employees, and other stakeholders. The bankruptcy called for the company to liquidate and close its remaining stores. The announcement came amid an offer by fashion retailer Forever 21 to purchase 149 of, its, of the remaining Mervyn stores for an undisclosed amount. The original negotiations failed, and Mervyn's liquidated all 149 stores under the bankruptcy action. Several months later, the department store retail Coles and Forever 21 prevailed to, in a joint bid at bankruptcy auction to take over the lease of 46 Mervyn stores. Coles has assumed 31 stores, while Forever 21 has assumed 15 stores. In the KPIX TV interview on February 11, 2009, Mervyn Morris' son, Jeff, revealed that the family had bought the Mervyn's name and an intentional property, including the company's customers list, as part of an effort to relaunch the company. Morris did not say when the website would launch or how much it would cost, only that decisions will be up to his sons. In 2009, the Mervyn's website was replaced with a single-page site allowing visitors to sign up for a mailing list to receive updates about the future of Mervyn's. However, that page is no longer accessible and the website no longer exists. A street named Mervyn's Drive still exists in La Habra, California, as a Mervyn's location was there prior to 2008. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching and please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time, this is JDT Fridays Fan 97 signing off. Ciao!